People get angry. They get estranged. Anger, almost always, is really fear in disguise. Almost always. And it binds you. And it estranges you. I've told people for years, the truth is, be kind, tender-hearted. You know that verse, chapter 4? Forgiving one another. How can you be kind to people and tender-hearted to people? You can't if you don't know how to forgive one another as God for Christ's sake forgave you. The key element in your relationship with another person, the key to emotional stability in your life and, the li and, and relationships with others is going to be the ability to practice Ephesians 4.32. Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another. You say, they've done wrong to me. Yes, they have. And for, you can forgive them as God for Christ's sake forgave you. You did wrong to him, didn't you? Why did he forgive you? Because of the cross. What did he do? He took your sins and sent them away to the cross. Forgiveness means to be sent away. Where? To Calvary. And God says, I take your sin and I put him on the cross and I say the cross is enough. Payment. Sufficient. Forgiveness is a choice of your will where you look at the offense that's been done against you and you don't say it didn't happen, it didn't hurt, it wasn't wrong. God didn't say any of that. He didn't sweep it under the rug. He said it was wrong, it hurt, it shouldn't have happened, and I'm going to send it to Calvary and let Jesus pay, and I'm going to take what he paid, and that's enough. Whom God set forth to be a propitiation through his blood, through faith in his blood, People argue about Romans 3.25. It says, is that God's faith or your faith? I think it's both. I think it's me believing what God believes. You know what God believes? His son's payment at Calvary is enough to pay for your sins. Well, if you believe that, and you can rest in that, then you know what? You understand how to deal with other people. Because when they offend you, and by the way, you can't forgive somebody until they offend you. Yeah, I look at you and I say, I can't forgive you anything. Here's a divine asset that I can't exercise today. I can't obey that verse, forgiving one another, because until you offend me. So come up here and don't, now don't do this. <laughs> but if you come up here and step on my toe, kick me in the shin, call me a name, do something, you know what I can do? I can say, hey, get off. No, or I can say, thank you, brother. Thank you, sister. You know what? Now you, you did something that allows me to do something I couldn't do if you hadn't have done it. man asked me yesterday. He said, Brother Jordan, you get criticized up the yin-yang. Just this past week, I got three emails from people stirred up, calling me names. He said, how do you handle that? I said, you know what I do? I said, be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God for Christ's sake forgave you. I just look at it and say, you know, they, I, 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 there's an asset I can't do. If I wasn't offended, and I can say, thank you, Lord. Not that somebody said something bad about me, tried to hurt me, tried to hurt you. But I don't have to say that the, 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 the resentment, the payment can go to the cross. And now I can look at them and be kind. I can look at them and say, you know, for somebody to have done that, they got a real problem that needs to be dealt with. How can I help? What can I do? You know what forgiveness does? It sets you free. What forgiveness does is it says the penalty is paid. The war is over. <laughs> you don't have to be at war anymore. I love that. I love peace. <laughs> Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. How are you going to do that? You never do it if you don't know something about forgiveness. These verses talk about God's grace. And by the way, all of that we learned in Romans. Verse 8, 9, 10, 11, he says, you know, people feel like they're adrift in the world, going along aimlessly, bored. you got a purpose. i got a purpose. You're a part of it. And I want to get to talking about it. So the rest of the book he does.
we'll go over the details of all this. But I want you to see the, the picture of it. This is what living in the embrace of grace is all about. So can I just invite you to relax and enjoy your life in Christ Jesus? It gives you acceptance and purpose and meaning and real true freedom, fulfillment. When you read these verses, say it's good to be loved in Christ Jesus. It's good to deserve it. You know, there's a, a saying out in the world that says, you are somebody. But you know, if you don't achieve anything, you know that isn't true. You take a kid gets out of high school and can't read, can't count. You know, I know people like that. And there's a sense of inadequacy in their heart that they really just don't get over. Because they know they've failed. Somebody's failed them. When you sense that, somebody can come along and say, you're somebody special. And their heart says, yeah, but I really can't. You know, one of the causes of procrastination is a fear of failure. Can I tell you, you don't have to procrastinate in Christ. You ain't a failure. You're a fully formed adult in the family, invited by the Father to sit at the table, qualified to be there, delighted. He's more delighted to have you there than you would be to be there. And you're completely equipped to run the business with your dad. Now, that's the privilege. And that's the life and the identity Wherever you go today, wherever you go tomorrow in your job, in your life, in the details of your life, you don't go there as an employee or student or housewife or a mother or a dad or grandparent or whatever it is. You go there as a saint of the Most High God with all those qualifications who then functions in that job for God's glory. You bring the grace of God where you are. You be loved. That's, what, that's why I love that name, Ephesians. It means desirable ones. <laughs> it's good to be that. Father, we thank you this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ, for our life in him. We thank you for our acceptance in the beloved. What a privilege to be yours. And, oh God, I pray that for myself and for us, that these things would be as rich and real in our hearts and lives, and that we would genuinely obey from the heart that form of doctrine that you've delivered to us. For your honor and glory in Christ's name. Amen.